Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. If you don't know me, my name is Duamel Bentley, and today we're honestly a little bit flustered in this channel. We're bringing you guys a review of the Anastasia Beverly Hills Norvina Palette Volume Number no. Five. So what I want to do, I want to create maybe two different looks. I've seen um, a lot of options in this palette, and we'll talk all about that today. However, I want to talk really quickly about packaging, and in my opinion, this is the most beautiful this palette has ever looked. The one, two, three, four, five, five for me. This is so beautiful. It's just like a dream come true. It has reflectiveness to it. It's just very just really innovative and very fresh in my opinion i really really like it i think the palettes are the same size all around volume one through five and they do at least the norvina volume five contains 25 shades and we'll we'll break that down we're going to swatch per row but before we get into swatching so this is a 60 dollars palette if we subdivide the 60 dollars value per shadow it comes to two dollars and 40 cents each shadow which if you think about it it's not too much now performance wise i've got to be honest with you i have not tried so this palette is a balance between shimmers and some mattes with shimmers and some true mattes now it's predominantly driven by the shimmers and glittery. I don't necessarily love that. I'm not going to lie to you. I definitely think that I would have wished that there was a nice balance. Um, I feel like you're gonna use more mattes than you are shimmers. There's so many things you can do with the shimmers except for just a nice little top around the eye. So personally, I would have enjoyed more mattes than shimmers. However, this is predominantly more shimmer to glitter infused palette than a matte palette so please keep that in mind that's personally something that i always look for in a palette making sure that i have a good balance not only of tone but i also have a good balance of the formulas right cool thing about this palette is that all of the formulas are individually made and we'll break that down in the sephora website they actually break that down and tell you what formula is for correspondent let's say shadow a and shadow b go with this formula and then you know so on and so forth so it's really interesting to me how sephora did a breakdown for it um i honestly i love the anastasia beverly hills brand and i think the product is really really nice now do i always see eye to eye with their values and how they run their business no however i have so much respect for both norvina and anastasia anybody in general that you know is able to handle themselves uh, adequately and build such an incredible empire especially them coming you know and being immigrants um to this country it's just so inspiring and i have so much respect for them i just kind of would have wished that if you guys have seen previous videos where i've made the anastasia uh beverly hills you know reviews i kind of just wish that they would have been more in touch with the reality of who they they're actually selling to versus what their dream is because i don't think they go hand in hand with that i think they prefer and i think they uh, focus a lot in the dream you know person and in my opinion it's just very limited and it's 2021 and i mean there's just no excuses at this point right so let's dive into the palette this is what the palette looks like again it's a very heavy uh, please excuse it i have been kind of grabbing it checking it out in the back here you have a nice little sticker same as the other palettes this pro pigment palette volume five now it is a vegan formula cruelty free which is you know very nice um again packaging is gorgeous uh, you guys can see and pick up more of the reflecting reflectiveness of it I, I can't speak i'm so mesmerized i'm sorry so when you first open it, it's a nice open. If I'm honest with you, it looks like so when you first open it. The mirror does hold itself pretty well, and it's a very large mirror. It fits your entire face and some. So I, I do like the mirror, and I do think that maybe the elevated price of the palette, more so than formula, is having to do a lot with component because honestly, this is one of the heaviest components I kind of own, period. Like, I do have one two three i don't have four but i do obviously now have 
number five as well. Uh, and they're equally all as heavy and equally all as big. So, I mean, that's, that's nice and interesting. You can pull it this far back. I wanna show you guys the shadows here. Now, looking at the story first impressions, a lot of people were saying, oh my God, this looks like Norvina volume number one. And I have Norvina volume number one. And if I'm honest with you, I also felt the same. I feel like after very thoroughly looking at them, myself and Felipe, or Felipe and I, and let's properly speak, please. This is number one right here. And I mean, same thing. I, I don't love the outer packaging of it. I think it's cute. It looks like a chandelier. Opening her up and looking at her side by side. They are different. They are different. I feel like this one's a little bit more pastel -y, if that makes any sense. But I do think that there's a lot of similarities for sure. It's purple predominant. And looking at it, Felipe and I found that both A2 and A3, which are these guys right here, were really, really similar to D4 and let me see here. It was D4 and C3, which are D4, where is she, hold on, sorry, D, the girl, C3 and D4, which are gonna be those ones. Other than that, I didn't really find any other comparison to it, but I will say this, enough with the purple. Like, I get it, you like the purple, you like the lavender, but enough is enough. You know what I'm saying? Like, how many more palettes can you charge us $60 for and just put purple in there? Because let's be honest and genuine, this is very inspired by purple and blues, more purple. I, I mean, the purple to me overtakes the imagery in my opinion. And then if we go to the number five, it's like heavily, heavily purpled. Let me tell you something, I love purple eyeshadow. I think it's one of those eyeshadows that you don't think you're gonna love. But then when you put it on you, you're like, wow, this looks so incredible and I really enjoy the way I look in this. However, enough is enough. Like, there's just too much. It's too much. It's like in every other palette, there's like purple, 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 purple. Girl, enough, Barney, enough, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to go per row. I'm going to do A, B, C, D, and E. So let's start with A. We have a nice white, which that was another pigment tone. It's actually pretty bright. That was another pigment tone that was in Norvina volume one. And this is the volume five. I'm gonna swatch the volume one as well so you guys can see if there's a difference in here. Honestly, I don't really see any difference whatsoever on them. I'm gonna swatch them on the top of my hand just to not mess with the whole system. So this is five, this is one. I feel like maybe they improved in the formula just a tad bit, but to be quite honest with you, it might have had to do as well with my pressing. Um, it looks like it's a repeated shade. So if you don't have number one or if you don't have number five um, and you have either or of these, there are some very, very close similarities in some of the shadows here. So let's go on with let me pick some more up. I do, I will say this number one, A1 on the number five. Oh my God, all these numbers. Um, it feels really nice and creamy. But that's what that swatch looks like. I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty lovely. It feels really nice and buttery. We're gonna go with A2 now, which is this almost like champagne bronzy type of topper. So it has almost like a pink shift to it, which I did not expect it to have. If you guys can catch it, it looks more gold on camera. But in real life, the shift is more pink than it is gold. In the camera, it looks completely gold. But I'm trying to see if maybe with the lights, no, well, maybe a little bit there. It has a nice little pink reflect, which is actually really interesting. I did not expect that, and I kind of like those little surprises in there. Let's go to A3 now, which seems to be more of like, like a royal purple. It's just, it looks very juicy, very beautiful. Let's swatch it right here. So on first impressions, I gotta tell you, these guys are paying off. 
like the quality of them on the first row they're really beautiful really buttery really creamy and i liked i'm not gonna lie to you i liked a2 because it's just it's it's different i didn't expect it to be as pink in person and you know you have a reflectiveness of it it's like pink and then gold and then maybe a little bronze really cute color all right so let's go to a4 which is a complete full matte I actually kind of like this tone. I think it's a great transition tone. And I have to say, the formula of the first row, we'll see if, you know, B, C, and D, and E have the same. I'm assuming it will be. But the formula on these guys are kind of crazy. Like, they're really buttery. Like, I'm kind of shook. I'm not going to lie. Wow. Okay. So that's the matte tone right there. It's like a mauve rosé moment it's just very gorgeous very creamy which is really really nice i honestly didn't expect it if i'm honest with you when i when we first got this felipe gifted me this beautiful palette at first when i got it i was like oh i'm excited to try it but then i saw all of the purples and i was like wow okay um i'm i'm flustered because i don't know you know Let's be honest here. Every time we do our makeup, we want to look as best, you know, best version that we can of ourselves. And we want to be creative and fun, or at least I want to be creative. I want to be fun and I want to have definitely something that's very glamorous and beautiful. So looking at these guys, I want to create something that's not just purple or not just nude. I want to kind of balance between. So I'm not going to lie. I'm a little stomped on what selection of tones do I go for here. And we'll... we'll We'll get into that in a minute here, baby. But let's go to number five. So far, I'm going to tell you the swatches here are incredible. I didn't really expect it to be this buttery. This is one of the most buttery and creamiest uh, eyeshadow palettes I've kind of touched. Sorry, Natasha Denona. It's the truth. Sorry, um, Pat McGrath, $125 palette. It's kind of the truth, you know? So let's go to A5, which is the last one of the row. Again, oh my God, they're just so creamy. Oh, girl. Like, oh, baby. All right. So this one's a little bit similar to A4. A5 is just deeper, maybe a little bit more red. This one's definitely cooler tone. But I think they would work really well as a transition to one of another. So... Row one is done, A1. Um, very, very nice, very cute. This is kind of like what it looks like on it. And I mean, I'm happy, I'm happy with it so far. Let's go to row B and let's do B1, which is kind of like this golden icy glitter. Reminds me a lot of, let me see if you guys can pick it up there. The, the light's blinding it a little bit because of the highlighter. It reminds me a lot of the highlighter they're launched on spring. Actually, I'm not surprised if this is the same formula. Um, this is gorgeous, number one. Number two, very, very reflective. Ooh, girl, girl. Let me settle down. Ooh, the glow excites me, honey. And do you see how blinding this is? I might have to use that as a highlighter. Okay. So this reminds me a lot of the Iced Out, is that what it's called, the Iced Out Highlighter? We'll pop a picture in there. Um, but it reminds me a lot of that guy and I really loved it. If you guys haven't seen that review, she'll be linked down below. Um, I used the Norvina palette, uh, the original kind of square palette Norvina on that video. So check that out because honestly, beautiful products. But this reminds me a lot of it. So if you didn't have the opportunity, I know they do have it in stock, but if you didn't have the opportunity to get it or you are battling if you want to purchase that and the palette, the shade is in here. Like it's in here. Let me actually grab um, the highlighter. I do have it. I grabbed the highlighter and swatched it on the top here. This is the actual eyeshadow. I feel like the eyeshadow is more blinding. It has a lot more pigment into it. The other one's a lot more gold and definitely more wet looking both beautiful definitely love them both i just feel like maybe if you're just like figuring out if you want to do this one or this one i think this will be a really good option because it'll last you a long time and you'll be able to definitely kind of get a lot more bang for your money because they definitely are very very similar i feel like this one's just a tweaked version 
I'm not going to lie to you, I would have loved to have seen this in the actual highlighting compact. I would have died. Anyway, moving on. So that's B1, and let's go to B2. This is more of like a very flowery lavender lilac, almost more to the pinkier side versus the blue side of a lilac. Again, so creamy. It almost feels like I'm touching velvet when I'm touching these shadows. That's it right there. I did not expect them to be this creamy and this pigmented. Look at these shadows. Oh my God, Norvina girl. But I didn't expect to be as surprised because I hadn't really touched and gotten in there because I wanted to do a first impressions with you guys because I just, you just don't know what to expect. There's, again, so much out there that you don't know what to expect. But I gotta tell you, pigment is flowing. The boom, boom, boom. Like, this is my favorite so far. Like, I can't handle it. So that's B3 there. This is more of a periwinkle, kind of bluey lavender. I would say if out of B2 and B3, B3 is the lavender shade in here for sure. Let's go to B4. Now B4 is a hybrid between a matte and little glitter flex. They're visually gold. Let's see if when we touch them, they'll they're kind of change it up a little bit. Okay, so this is what that looks like. Very, very vintage, very beautiful shade. Now that shade in particular, even though it's swatched really, really well, I don't know if it was because of the glitter, um, because I did experience that when I touched the highlighter versus the actual B1 shadow. The highlighter was drier. And B4 is a lot drier than either B3, B2, or any of the mattes that we've touched so far. But I mean, the performance is looking pretty good. Even the swatch looks a little bit drier. You can see here the most pigment, and then it kind of drags a little bit. These guys are more cohesive, more creamy. So that's food for thought there then b5 b5 looks more like a really browny whiny type of tone but it's like a metallic finish so let's go into her oh look at this that's gorgeous a little bit of this little smoke eye hello how you doing oof girl look at this pigment all right like if this is not a foreshadow for what's upcoming of how incredible the rest of these formulas are, I don't know what is. All right, guys, so my hands are fully clean and fully dry. I'm gonna go in for row C, and starting off the bat with row C, C1 is a really interesting color because it looks like, like a glacier um, blue with a hint of like purple in there. So let's kind of go in. It's more of a glittery formula gorgeous very beautiful oh all right yeah definitely once you swatch it it's more of like that glacier blue with like a beautiful like iridescence of purple very gorgeous color i think i might want to play with that amongst other ones but i think that might be a center piece right here right now oh baby okay Sorry, I get a little excited right here, right now. So let's go to C2. C2 is more of like that foil, metal, glitter type of, um, you know, metallic shadow. I'm trying to find more interesting names, but honey, it is what it is. So C2, it's that metal tone right here. Oh my God. Like, what is going on? Like, do you see this? Oh my goodness. I'm kind of shook. I don't know if you guys can tell, but let me do the last three of row C because if not, I'm gonna continue here. We're, this is gonna become a 20 minute video of me just watching. So this is C fully swatched. I will tell you definitely the purple in the middle here, which is the C3. Again, that has some glitter effect to it. And I feel like every time they have a little bit of glitter, they are drier. You can definitely see where it starts to kind of die down the pigment. But in the contrary side, we have the brown and you see how creamy and more like vibrant the swatch is. But overall, I gotta tell you, 
gorgeous colors. I know purple is a hard color to make too. Um, you know, I I'm sure by this point, um, that's old news. By this point, I'm sure they've got it um, well under wraps. But, you know, so far everything's performing really well. Let's go to the D row and swatch all of the D shades and then let's continue. All right, guys, so this is row D. Such a gorgeous color, it's not even funny. You do have the press glitter as well. Uh, and I gotta tell you, these last two shades are so, so similar that I kind of am a little disappointed. Although, undertones are different. D number five is more plum based and D number four, that's a full matte, no glitter infused. Again, glitter infused, and you can definitely tell of how dry this formula is compared to the bottom formula. But the original one is very, very grape, very, very purple. So let me wipe all of these swatches off and let's go to row number E or letter E. What am I saying? And I'll be right back. All right, now that we are done with row D, let's go to row E. I've got to tell you so far, I'm really kind of surprised. I have really liked every single row. Although there's so many purples here and visually, again, I thought that, oh my God, enough is enough. I definitely think enough is enough. But all of these have, have a charm to them. Like they have some kind of like, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I definitely have enjoyed all of the colors individually and I'm excited to go into row E. So let's go, <sighs> baby. I, I just, <sighs> on swatches alone, this is iconic. How beautiful is this? This, this, this. They're all so beautiful. This one, I can't handle it. I gotta tell you, I think they have a good light to dark contrast. Like for example, if I wanted to create a halo eye, this is perfect because it's dark enough, but it's not gonna overpower my eye look and it's not gonna make it look overly dark, right? So I definitely think this one's a really great one for smokiness without overpowering too much. And I gotta tell you, individually, all of them performed really, really well as a swatch. Uh, again, dry hands, just like how beautiful are, I just, I need like 10 eyes because I need to put all of these on, like no joke. Okay, the product only sold both in Sephora, some of, well, well, in Los Angeles, only two locations had this in store, which I, I you know, I adamantly with Felipe, we seeked. Um, and it was the Hollywood and Highlands, which is essentially where the Walk of Fame is. They have a very large Sephora store there. And then the one in Rodeo Drive, that definitely was closer to me. So I went to the Rodeo Drive location and they had it there for me. I personally don't like the customer service of the Rodeo Drive store. It's just very, very poor. I prefer the Hollywood and Highland, but it's just so much hassle to go over there that I'm not playing around, girl. So we got it at the Rodeo Drive um, Sephora store and going into the website here, it says it's, you know, pressed powder formula, it's matte finish, has some shimmer finish without sulfates and SLS and SLES. Now, I'm not thoroughly informed what SLS and SLES are. However, I'll make sure to put it up. Um, I just don't understand why they would put sulfates. Sulfates typically are cleansing agents um, on an eyeshadow. So I don't know if they're just looking for things that obviously are not in there and then promoting it um, to not being in there. So you can be like, ooh, I don't even know what this is, but it's not in, you know? But uh, we'll make sure to find out because I definitely, sulfates, again, it's a cleansing agent. So I don't know. So it says it's a professional grade artistry palette uh, featuring the 25 size and it's a high performance, high pigment shades. And I gotta be honest with you, on that first um, description, I agree. It feels professional, it feels like it's delivering, it feels just luxurious and rich, and honestly, I think that for the price and the size, it's a steal. I'm not going to lie to you, at first I was like, $60, that's a lot, for more lavender, purple shadows, like, uh, but honestly, getting down to the nitty gritty of things, like just swatching, looking at the tones, really checking them out, flexing the tone, like, it's worth it. It's if, if you're thinking to yourself, 
oh, I want to get uh, Natasha Denona or I want to get a uh, Pat McGrath shadow. Number one, honey, this is your journey. And definitely I encourage you to follow that. So if you at a point of your life, you are in love with the color story of the Natasha Denona or the Pat McGrath, how about it? Mothership it away, baby. But she's giving them a run for her money. A lot more selection of shadows, a lot of different color stories between the one to the number five. And the quality, in my opinion, of what I've touched and worked with, this feels top notch. Like this feels incredible. Even the glittery topper tones, um, iconic, definitely that. So let's continue reading here. It says, you know, again, it's free of all of those things. It has less than 1% of synthetic fragrance, um, which I, d I didn't really capture any, I mean, fragrance, it's less than 1%, but you know, doesn't really smell like anything. It smells more of like, like maybe like chalk or like powder. Okay. So I'll make sure to put up here, um, what I was talking about, how, you know, with the ingredients, they subdivide. Like for example, A1 is its own formula. B5 and D1 are sharing the same formula. E4, A3, those are separate, but A4, A5, B2, those are sharing the same formula. So it's, it's interesting to see how some of them are formulated just to be themselves and some others do share the formula. But definitely, I want to say the grand majority of the shadows here, they share a unique formula amongst themselves. Like they, they don't really, other than what, C5, D5, E2, that's three. And then A4, A5, and B2 are, and B5 and D1 are the only ones sharing. So I want to say it's less than 10% sharing the formula. Every other shadow has its own formula. Um, I want to say maybe not 10, maybe like 20, like 20%, which is still really nice. So I, I really enjoyed that for sure. All right, you guys, so I have primed my eyes. I used the MAC Laying Low Pro Long Wear Pain Pot. This guy has been with me kind of since I decided to come on full time on this channel. Uh, you can see here I've I've hit bottom, but there's still some product in there. So, you know, I just did a little bit of that on my eyelids. To be quite honest with you, I'm only doing that to ensure the longevity of the eyeshadow because I don't think that how delicious and buttery these eyeshadows felt that you will need a primer. However, if you want your makeup to look as good all night long and to be as potent all day long, use a primer. You can use the ABH primer. You can use the MAC, whatever you feel best and most comfortable with. Use a primer and make sure you're hydrating well. So what I'm going to do, starting with this BH Cosmetics number no. seven brush. This is just a fluffy brush. You can use whichever one you'd like. I'm going to go in with E2 and I'm just going to, you know, gently press on here. There is some fallout coming out of the brush as well as from the pan. Um, to be honest with you, it is quite to be expected because of how creamy these shadows are for there to be some fluff on here. And I don't typically use mirrors on my palettes, but I think this is so big that I kind of have to do it, right? So I'm just gonna go in on the crease and just kind of like start warming her up. Uh, with color, I'm gonna pick up some more. You definitely work to your heart's content with the intensity you wanna make the shadow. Okay, so the color has laid down really nicely. Uh, again, this was E2. What I'm going to do is I'm going to incorporate E5 um, and I'm going to kind of like create just, I'm trying to use as much of I can from this 25 uh, palette, 25 shadow palette. Okay. So this is one of those trust the process as you go because right now we're just looking like, you know, uh, how you doing? What I want to do is essentially I want to create depth into the middle of my eye and then I'm going to smoke things up a little bit. I think I'm going to cut a crease, which I don't normally do too often, 
but I feel like this is gonna be appropriate for us to kind of be able to see the different looks that we are able to create here. And the only two colors that I'm using right now is E2 and A5, and I'm just interloping them and intermixing and intertwining, if I can find any other extra internal world. Um, but so far they're working really well together. I think they're just kind of creating more depth and they're blending pretty easily as well. So that's definitely something to take into account. The brush has a lot to do with it, I'm not going to lie to you. Is this my favorite brush? No. Does it work really well? Yeah. Uh, fluffy brush doesn't have to be, you know, anything special, but I do prefer the Morphe brushes than I do the BH Cosmetics. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab E4, which is a camel brown, one of my favorite browns, to be honest with you. And I'm going to start kind of smoking the outer line. So the cut crease is carved. I'm going to go in with, I'm thinking here, ah, there's so many good ones. Who do I go with? Um, I think I'm going to go in with E3 just to kind of keep the theme of like the lavender lilac type of tones. This is what E3 looks like. I'm kind of excited. Let me go ahead and pack this on. I really love how that looks. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna smoke out and blend the outer edge and then we will move on to the next side. Okay, so what I did was I grabbed a small packing brush and I added a little bit of white because I really wanted to see how the white looked. And this white is really, really strong. I'm kind of really happy because it's just really nice and bright. Also, what I want to do for the sake of trying more of the shadows, I'm going to mix A3, which is more of this soft lavender type of tone. And I'm going to put it a little bit on top of A or E3 so we can have a little bit of dimension. Okay, so I think this eye is pretty much done. Let me line the top, put a lash on so we can smoke the bottom and I will be right back. Okay guys, so my lashes are on. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go using a liner brush and I'm gonna go to E5 and I'm gonna line where my lash is and I'm gonna extend it just a little bit out. All right, so I've lined where my lashes are with E5. So far we have down E5, E3, E2, A3. We also have down A5. Good amount of colors okay so i think i want to do a little bit of purple underneath just to create a little bit more of dimension on the top and on the bottom so i think i'm gonna run into oh i'm so I'm, I'm confused on which one i want to do there's just so many good ones i think i want to do d4 and d5 why not so i'm gonna go ahead and grab, what do I grab? Let's see here. Because I want to have it a little bit more precise. So I'm going to grab another Morphe brush. And this is more tapered as well. I'm going to go in with the darker, which is D5. Just pressing it on. They do have some fallout on the pan. And they definitely do have fallout on the face. However, that's why I have just prepped my skin. I'm going to wipe a little bit off underneath the eye, prep it again, and then do my foundation when we're done with this. So definitely do keep in mind because they're so buttery uh, and they're fluffy, they're going to have some fallout. So make sure you do your eyes first and then do your face. Or if you're doing your face first, prep it adequately. Make sure you're baking. So if it falls, just wipe that off and call it a day. Okay, so now that that's laid, I'm gonna go in with another Morphe brush. This is the Morphe X Jacqueline Hill JH38. And I'm gonna grab D4, which is a lighter version, and I'm gonna smoke it out. So D5 and D4 are on the bottom here now. Definitely you can again see that there's a lot of fallout. And what I did as well was I went with E5 in lined the bottom lash line. I'm gonna go in my waterline with this 
wonderful arrow in hands. I don't know by, is it, is it by, I think it's called arrow in hands. It's a waterproof eyeliner um, and it's called Bright Now. This shade is a little bit more on the pinkier white and I absolutely love it. Once it dries, it stays. And because I have so much darkness, I wanna kind of open it up just a tiny bit where the white meets. And I think I'm gonna draw the black kind of meeting the white. So it's a nice contrast. Okay, so this is the final look on this eye. We've got, you know, the little bit of cut crease, half cut crease, not a full on. Extended it a little bit, you know, as a wing liner, I did the purple on the bottom. What I did to kind of contrast the bottom lashes, I grabbed one of my Queen Bitch bundles. Um, this shade is Virginity from Jeffree Star Cosmetics. And I applied it on my lower lash line. And I mean, I'm really happy with it. I think this looks really interesting, really different. Something that definitely we have not created in this channel before. So let's move on to the second eye because I'm feeling like two different people. Like my eye looks so tiny. Like over here, it looks like large and in charge. And over here, it's like, and like, you know what I'm saying? So let me get it together, girl. And um, let's move on to the next eye so I can do my full face. I mean, I gotta tell you on first impressions, shadows are working beautifully. Like I'm, I don't have any complaints on the eyeshadows. For the cut crease, I use the P. Louise. This is called the Blank Canvas. Now, I really like it, I think it's great. Um, again, for the primer on the eyes, I use the MAC Paint Pot in the shade, uh, let's see here, Laying Low. And you know, I'm kind of ready. For the liner, for you guys that are asking, I did very, very tight waterline with this Araceli Brown Liquid Liner. I really like it, I think it works really, really well. But then I followed it up with this liner brush and going in with E5 and kind of tracing it out. And I mean, I gotta tell you, I think it looks really beautiful, definitely very dramatic. But girl, girl, this is what we're here for. The drama, there's no drama. I can't live my life. So let's continue. I think I'm gonna do something else, maybe something a little bit, um, I don't know. I don't know what I wanna do over here. I think I wanna do, um, for this next eye, what I want to do is I want to create something a little bit softer. Definitely, we have a lot of different options here of color, but I think this is more of like, a, you know, dramatic, hardcore. I want to create something that's definitely a little bit dramatic as well because girl, but I also want it to be very soft and angelical. So I'm going to go with B2, B3, which are the lighter lilac versions of here. And I think I want to create more of like a halo effect on the eye. There's definitely a lot of opportunity here and I'm really excited to do it. I'm looking at the palette. I have it right here and I'm just like, what? Like, I just, I don't know. So let's start with this. I'm gonna grab B3, which is, um, hmm. Actually, scratch that. I'm gonna grab A4 and I'm gonna create a crease with that. And then I'm gonna go in with B2 and B3 to start the halo effect. Okay, I mean that spread it out really really nicely Gave me a nice little wash of color, which is exactly what I needed and wanted with a packing brush and I'm gonna start packing the B2 both in the outer and inner corner And as you can see here, she's got lovely pigment like I don't have in any way, shape, or form the experience today that this palette is not worth its price. I definitely, at first I was like, I wonder if it's going to be worth, you know, the value, but to be honest with you, this is a palette that is worth every second of its dime. The options here are wonderful. And even though I'm not the biggest fan of the purple, like focus here, you know, just because she's done that one too many times. But to be honest with you, everything here has worked well. The, the colors blend really well. There's no patchiness. Like everything's working well within each other. I'm really surprised. So now that I have the base with B2, I just used a packing brush again, 
went in, you know, grabbed the pigment, which it grabs really, really well too. And I just, again, started patting it to intensify. And then I'm using a sharp little blending brush to kind of soften out the edges. Okay, so now that that is done, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use B3 and I'm gonna kind of center it and swirl it up. All right, so this eye is kind of set and blended. What I'm gonna do is, because I wanna create something a little bit more fun, I'm gonna be using my Krylon High Gloss. I love, love this product, particularly for topping and making things look very juicy. So I'm just gonna grab some of the product on my hand here. It's gonna look like so. And I'm just gonna grab a clean brush and I'm just gonna apply it on top. Okay, so once you're done with applying the gloss and kind of softening and blending out, of course, we've got to still clean things up. I'm going to grab the packing brush again, and I'm going to go back into B3. I'm going to smoke the bottom line, and then I'm going to add C1 on top of it just to create more dimension. So next, I'm going to pick up some of the D2 glitter, which is the pressed glitter, and I'm just gonna pad a little bit on top of my eye area just for reflectiveness when I close and open my eyes. I'm just gonna apply a little bit more gloss on because I feel like the glitter did grab a little bit of the gloss. Um, really interesting news, guys. I was working the glitter and it has a piece of plastic now i did find a piece of plastic on a3 but then i said okay it might just be that might just be okay but like look at this it's straight up like plastic rubber do you see this Oh my God. Now, I'm not sure of what in the heck that is, but let's talk two things. Number one, this is causing a dent very large and very in charge on my D2 formula. Look at that. Do you see that dent right there? That is a dent, honey. Um, and number two, that's so weird. I've never had to face that. Is, is this like the Jacqueline Hill saga number two, but not Jacqueline Hill? I, I have no idea. All right, let's continue this on. So on B1, I'm gonna be using um, this little brush and I'm gonna apply the metallic shade B1 on my inner tear duct just to bring some light into it and I'm gonna be mixing it in with C2 as well. See, so very, very loud. All right, let me go ahead and clean this off of camera, put my lashes on and do my brow and I'll be back. All right, you guys, so this look has finally finalized a lot a lot of different shades on my eyes today and i gotta tell you i was a little nervous because i didn't know if my lash was going to stay because of the gloss being so close to the actual eyelid or the lashes but it's so beautiful like lashes took really well i just cleaned up a little bit to make sure we had the sharpness and kind of like the nice that we needed um i'm loving it gotta tell you honestly at first, I wasn't as excited about the palette because I just feel like the purple has been done so many times by so many brands. And in particular, Anastasia Beverly Hills Norvina has done so, so many purples. It's just like enough, right? Like I'm exhausted. I feel like I have so many of the same colors already. But once I started playing with it, I gotta tell you, they are beautiful. So if you don't have a purple palette or something that has a purple, 
a very strong purple presence. This might be an amazing option. Number one, I think value is incredible quality off the charts. I think it pays off, it blends well, it works within each other. There's different options. I would have wished that they would have done a lot more mattes than the shimmers, just again, because there's so many things you can do with the shimmers. I didn't really love um, D12 for being a pressed glitter. I felt like it was just a little bit difficult to work with. And of course, I'll be uploading some pictures. I don't wanna grab it and, and tussle it too much. But I'll be uploading some pictures because like I said, I did get in my um, palette, I noticed that they had some plastics in there. And this is more like nylon kind of stretchy um, plastic, but still, you know, it, it created a very large dent in my eyeshadow pan. And this is a brand new eyeshadow, not the most affordable, but not the most expensive, but errors like this shouldn't happen. I'm absolutely sure that if Norvina saw this, she not only would be mortified, but she would rectify the situation. So I got to tell you that I definitely overall really enjoyed the experience as a highlight. Girl, B1 is killing it as a highlighter. I just did a little bit of a fan. I didn't do too much. I just touched it and then worked it on the skin. And like, it's just so multi use and i didn't expect it to be like that if i'm honest with you i expected it to be okay and i expected it to be good and i know i love purple eyeshadow so when we got it felipe gifted me this i was so excited um but as an influencer as someone who's kind of bringing you guys content i wanted to really kind of break things down and say all right comparing it to the other ones what are the rumors what's happening how does it perform and I got to tell you, I think the quality was incredible. I think this has been one of the best quality eyeshadows we have tried in a little bit in the channel. So it makes me really, really excited. I'm not going to lie to you. Overall, I just hope moving forward, we don't have the same mistakes. I love the fact that we have more of like a dreamy, iridescent, you know, kind of wet eye and then we have more of like all right i can work with with this and, and you know go to the office and maybe go out who knows i don't even know what you're doing right here right now oh my gosh excuse me i came undone i've got to say you guys after both different looks we used a great percentage of the palette itself so i can absolutely tell you that this palette is consistent within its quality i can tell you that it performs beautifully honestly i don't have any complaints over it other than the fact that i had the plastic and i'm just tired of seeing the same purple story one and over and over and over and over again it's just like come on with that said you guys if you haven't subscribed to the channel please subscribe to the channel i would love for you to join the dufay family we are ever so growing and ever so changing darling so thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the thumbs up, the notification bell, so you don't miss any of the craziness. And honey, binge watch. It's a thing. I will catch you on the next one. Bye.